I want to use these beads as a model to represent chromosomes to kind of show you what the differences are between mitosis and meiosis 1. So what I have here is a hypothetical eukaryote with three chromosomes that is diploid. So it has three chromosomes with two pairs of each chromosome, each pair represented by a different color. So blue and green are one pair. These are homologous chromosomes, red and yellow, purple and orange. These are homologous pairs of each chromosome. Now, one of the things that happens that's the same between mitosis and meiosis one is just before those, we have duplication of the chromosomes. So each of these chromosomes is duplicated and that is now represented here by these extra set of beads that are being added here. So prior to mitosis and prior to meiosis one, we have a duplication of the chromosomes, meaning we now have two copies of each of those chromosomes. Now, what's gonna happen in mitosis is that all of the chromosomes are going to line up at the metaphase plate independently like this. So each of these represent a pair of sister chromatids. These, the two blues, the two greens, the reds, these are sister chromatids. And those sister chromatids are all going to line up independently at the metaphase plate during mitosis. And during anaphase then, each of these is going to split and move to their respective sides like this. This extra piece of tape here represents what then happens in telophase, which is these two split apart to make their own separate cells. So this is the end of mitosis. We now have two daughter cells resulting from the split here. Now, if you look, what we have are the exact same situation that we started with, meaning that all the chromosomes we had in the parent cell are now found in each of the daughter cells. And that's because we duplicated them and evenly split them apart in mitosis. Now, if we go back and look at what's gonna happen in meiosis, one of the first things that's gonna happen differently is that these, these homologous chromosomes are going to pair up in a process called synapsis. So what that means is that, in this case, the blue and the green chromosomes, those are gonna form a tetrad complex, or sometimes called a bivalent complex, which occurs with synapsis, where all these chromosomes basically fuse together into one unit called the tetrad or the bivalent. That's going to happen for each of the homologous chromosomes like you see here. So these all form what we now have three bivalent or tetrad complexes. The next unique event of meiosis is crossing over. So now that we have these complexes set up, what we'll now see is that little pieces of the, the, of the closest touching sister chromatids here are going to actually swap genetic elements between their homolog next to them. So for example, a little piece of the blue chromosome will come off and swap with the green like this. So we now have slight variations in each of these chromatids here in the middle where they're not completely made up of the blue chromosomes they now have slight mixes between the green and the blue and that's going to happen on all three of the chromosomes so now when you look we notice that each of these chromatids here in the middle have a different variation and a different makeup of genes that come from each of the two different homologous chromosomes. So these can be the same genes, but they can be variations of those two, of, this, of the same gene. For example, if we have a color, a gene that codes for pigment, the genes both code for pigment, but they might code for a different pigment. So a black pigment versus a white pigment, for example. So we might get different color variations, different size variations, things like that. Now, that's the next thing in meiosis. So we have the, the synapsis crossing over. The next thing then is the way that these these tetrads or bivalents line up at the metaphase plate in meiosis one. So this would be metaphase one. What's going to happen is the entire tetrad or bivalent complex is going to line up like this at the metaphase plate. Now, during anaphase one, when these go to separate, what's going to happen is they're going to separate as homologous pairs or as, as sister chromatids like this where each of the daughter cells is going to get one set of homologous chromosomes or the other, but not both. 
So in mitosis, each of the daughter cells gets a green and a blue. Now we've got each of the daughter cells getting either the green or the blue with the crossing over that's taking place being the only exception there. So we now have at the end of meiosis one, telophase one coming in, splitting those two cells apart. At the end of meiosis one, we have two daughter cells, but now each of these daughter cells is now considered to be haploid. And they're haploid because they only have one set of the homologous chromosomes or the other and not both. In order to be diploid, I need two sets of each chromosome. For example, I need a green and a blue. I'm haploid if I only have one set or the other. And that's exactly what's happened here in the end of meiosis one. Now I have two copies of the green and two copies of the blue, but it's not the number that makes the difference, it's the, qual the quality. So I have only one of the green or the blue and not both. And that's what makes me haploid in this situation. Now in meiosis two, what's going to happen is the remaining DNA on each of these daughter cells is going to divide again. And this is gonna look a lot more like mitosis. So what's gonna happen here is these are gonna line up at the equator. We'll do it this way this time. Here's the equator here in the middle. So this is gonna line up like this here, right out of room here. But we're gonna see them line up like we did in mitosis. So the same thing will take place on the other side over here. And now, as they go to divide, what's going to happen is each of the daughter cells is going to get one of these two sister chromatids that is remaining. Like this here. And our dividing line will now show that we have one, two, three, four daughter cells at the end of meiosis two. Now notice that each of these daughter cells has only one of the two original sets of chromosomes. So they are now haploid. We have only one blue chromosome, the, the purple here. Now, the difference is that we have elements of the other chromosomes sprinkled in there. So I have parts of the, the orange and parts of the purple in at least some of these. And so each of these daughter cells not only has haploid, con, uh, haploid condition, but they also have a mix of DNA that was different from the original parent cell. So each of these now has a, a unique combination. If you look, each of these chromosomes the combination of chromosomes is different for each daughter cell. So this daughter cell has the original red, blue, and purple, but this daughter over here has the original orange and yellow, but a recombination of the green and the blue. And this one down here has recombinations of all three chromosomes. This one up here has recombinations of two chromosomes and one of the original. So every daughter cell is genetically distinct. Now these are slight variations. These are not like completely different species or completely different sets of DNA. They're slight variations, but they are variations. And in nature, over the grand scheme of things, those slight variations can actually make a big difference. Each of these daughter cells will contribute a, a slightly unique set of DNA to the future offspring, and that ensures that the future offspring will be slightly different from the parents. And that means that over long periods of time, our population has the ability to change slowly and adapt to new potential environmental situations. And that's what makes meiosis so unique and so different is that it creates variations and it also reduces the overall chromosome condition from diploid down to haploid.